Thank you for your interest in serving in our live stream ministry. Today I'm going to offer a brief tutorial of the equipment that is used in the control room and then how it's used during live stream services. So first, let's introduce the equipment. We'll start from left to right, all the way on the far left here, you see this laptop that is currently closed. That laptop is only used to control the remote cameras, the three cameras that are in the sanctuary. Those three cameras are controlled by this laptop. Beside the laptop, there is this Roland video mixer. It is a four channel mixer. It has three camera inputs and one computer input for slides. Above that Roland mixer, there is a monitor. And that's the preview monitor for the four channels coming out of the Roland mixer. Just below that monitor, there is a modem, an internet modem. That modem is a dedicated modem just for the audio coming from the sound booth in the sanctuary. That modem is connected via Wi-Fi to this iPad. This iPad controls the audio mix for the live stream. Just below the iPad, there is an audio monitor that can be turned on to listen to the audio mix that is going to the live stream. Beside that, there's this laptop. This laptop is dedicated just for the intro slides that introduces the live stream whenever it's being broadcast. Below that laptop, there is this audio capture device that is capturing the audio from the soundboard in the control room in the sanctuary. And that sends the audio signal to the streaming computer. And that moves to the next item. This keyboard is connected to this monitor, this big computer, and that is our streaming computer. That's what sends the signal to the internet from our control room. Let's start with this laptop at the far left. If you look at this laptop, there is an icon right at the bottom that looks like a remote control camera. Double click that icon and it will open up the, the PTZ Optics controlling software. And what this software does is this software remotely controls the cameras. When the software opens, it'll look like this. If you will go to view, advanced view, it'll widen the view out and then hit the full screen mode. What this has done is it's opened up this program that is now the remote control for all three cameras. So I'll click on camera one and I'll discuss all these uh, options here in just a moment, but this is the PTZ Optics remote control software. Let's go ahead and go over here to the Roland mixer and we'll turn this Roland mixer on. The power button is behind, right there, behind the T-bar. This is called a T-bar. That's where the power button is. So we'll wait for the Roland mixer to fire up. Then we should see on this screen, the four previews of the four inputs from the Roland mixer. So there's the four previews on the monitor for the Roland mixer. You see, Camera one is the top left. Camera two is the top right. Camera three is the bottom left, which is the straight on view of the platform. And input four is the laptop that I mentioned earlier, that one right there, that is only used for the intro slides for the live stream. So as you look at this PTZ Optics software, we have camera one, camera two, and camera three. For each of these cameras, there are nine preset settings. You can go to camera two, there are nine preset settings there, and the same for camera three, nine preset settings. So let me go back to camera one, and we'll look at the preview screen, and I'll go through settings one, two, three, four, five, six, just so you can see how the camera will move as I select the different presets. That's preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four, that would go onto the guitar player and vocalist, 
preset five, looking at the keyboard player over there. Preset six, that's a congregation shot. So you can see how quickly I'll go to preset seven. That's looking at the bass player. Preset eight, that's the whole vocalist shot. Preset nine, that's looking at the drummer and the piano player. So each of these presets go to a different camera angle. Let's go to camera three. That's the straight on view. And I'll do the different presets there. Preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four, preset five. This is called tight pulpit. I'm just gonna zoom in tight. Preset six, that's looking at the screens in the sanctuary. This is helpful whenever you wanna know where they are in the service, if you need to know what's going on. Uh, this is preset seven, preset eight, preset nine. So again, three cameras with nine presets each. Also each of these cameras, you can adjust the presets with this zoom in and zoom out. You can also, because these are pan, tilt, zoom, you can move the cameras up, down, left, and right. On this side of the control panel are the uh, shutter speeds and brightness, iris. You probably won't ever have to mess with that. Um, those will usually be set before you enter the control room. So let's look at the mixer. This is the video mixer. And as I mentioned, it has four channels. Red is what is on or live. Green is what is upcoming. So um, we typically do not use the T-bar because sometimes the T-bar can get stuck and you get a halfway shot with half of one camera and half of another. So as you enter, there's the third button down here. It's called mix. That's really the best way to do it. And uh, it's currently playing on camera one. That's what's going to the live stream. And camera two would be what's next. If you want to go to camera three next, you'd simply press the three at the bottom and that'll go to camera three next. Then as I push this button, it changes to camera three. So now the next camera in line is camera one. This is the live camera. This is what's upcoming. If I want to switch to camera two, I simply switch to camera two, push this button up here, and it will fade to camera two. Now I'll show you what those fades look like in just a moment. You can also, if you want to, on the row that has the red button, if you want to do a quick change, you just simply change it on these top buttons. But to do a crossfade, you would need to use these buttons over here. Again, you can use the T-bar, but I don't recommend it because sometimes the T-bar gets stuck. But I'll show you what those crossfades look like in just a minute. So that's the basic functionality of the Roland mixer. Next, we have the iPad. And so the password to the iPad is 5335. Now, I mentioned earlier that there is this modem right here. And this modem, the iPad must be connected to this Wi-Fi router, this modem. So I'll go ahead and make sure it is. It normally always is. But if you click on Wi-Fi, you'll see the different routers that are available, LVBC Wi-Fi. Um, this is called T-Home. We always want a T-Home, all right? So it's on T-Home, and this does not have any internet. This Wi-Fi is only to connect the iPad to the uh, sound board in the sound booth in the sanctuary. Now, once we have that established, we go here to M32 Mix. We open that up, and this is our mixer connection. So this is, we can see some uh, indicator lights that there are there is music coming through, and I turned music on in the sanctuary just so we can have a signal. This is very important. In order to control the live stream mix, this button here, sends on fader must be pressed and we must be on channel eight or bus eight is what that's called. 
A bus in the audio world carries, just like a bus carries passenger, passengers, a bus carries signals. So we've got to be on bus eight. That is the dedicated bus for the live stream mix. On the top of this program, you will see pages. And we have three pages that have information coming to them. You can see I just went on page three, and the only thing on page three is the drums. And so these faders are tied together because it's a stereo input of drums, and that's how you can control the level of drums. Come over here to page two. You can see there's different um, channels that are marked. And you come over here to page one, also different channels that are labeled for the different inputs, whether that's the keyboards, the bass, the guitars, the acoustic guitar, vocalists, um, the headset mic for preaching, the computer input, all those things. And so most of the time you will not have to mess with the, the mixes or the volumes, except occasionally, let's say, so look over here for instance, this is from the live stream on Sunday, and the soprano mic is turned way up compared to these other mics. The reason that is, is because at the end of the service, Wade grabbed the soprano mic to do the closing prayer. Typically, the soprano mic would be down here. But whenever Wade began to pray, the person operating the control room said, I can hardly hear Wade. Let me turn him up while he does the closing prayer. So that was turned up, the volume, okay? I'll put it back down there to where it normally is. Um, the other very, very important aspect of the audio mix is this channel right here called Live Room. In the back of the sanctuary, there is a very high quality mic that is picking up the live room sound. So when the audience is singing, the instruments coming through the, the main speakers, and this is used, this channel is used during music only. It's on mute now, you can see it's muted, because um, we don't want this mic to be on during preaching or during praying or any type of speaking. This brings a, a real uh, ambient quality to the music when it's live streamed. So this is turned up to about where it needs to be and it's muted right now, I'll go ahead and unmute it. And so that's where you would have it during music when the music is done and somebody comes up to lead through prayer time, mute that because it'll make the, the speaking audio much clearer if the ambient mic, the live room mic is muted. So below this is the live stream audio monitor. I'm gonna turn it on. Immediately you hear music coming from the live stream audio monitor coming through these computer channels that I have turned on, okay? Next is the laptop that controls the slides for the introduction of the live stream. The program we use is called Pro Presenter, and so on the bottom of the taskbar, you see that Pro icon. I'm gonna double click that, and that's going to open up the Pro Presenter program. So when the Pro Presenter program opens up, you'll see it it looks something like this, and this is uh, called the Stream Intro Slideshow, which is what we're on there. And so I'll just push this top there, and you can see it started to play. And this is a scrolling slideshow that scrolls through all of these slides. On the top right of the program, there is an output icon that needs to be on. So now that is on and it's sending this signal to the Roland video mixer, and now we can see it on the preview. So there are four things on the preview now, all right? And that, again, is only used in the introduction of the live stream. Okay, now let's go to the streaming computer, and this is the computer that's connected to this mouse right here, and this keyboard, if you need to type anything. This is the main brain for the streaming and this is a very beefy um, computer we've got to do this so we don't have any hiccups during the live stream. You can see uh, this is a web-based software and so it's restream.io and this is our channel and that's all of our channel password and everything. We pay 
for this service. And then you can see there are three uh, options for streaming. We only stream to two. Uh, the bottom is my personal web page. We don't stream to my personal web page, but we do stream to our YouTube channel and to our um, Facebook page. So what you can do, if this is not done already, you can come up here and click on Update Titles. You can see the title is, this one is September 11th, 2022. Well, I'm gonna update that title to this coming Sunday, which would be September 18th. So I'll come over to the keyboard, backspace the one, put in the eight. So now we're ready for the title for this coming Sunday, Update All. So now the titles that will be on the Facebook page and also on the YouTube stream have the new title. That comes to the main software we use for streaming. It's called OBS, and you can see this icon right down here. That is OBS software. This is the streaming software that we use to stream to the internet. And so I'm going to come over to the mixer and I'm going to use these buttons to show you how the fade looks going from one camera to another. There's one phase, I'll fade, I'll switch another camera. There's another fade, I'll select the computer. There it fades to the computer. So again, when using that, that's using these buttons here, fading back and forth between channels. Um, so that's a quick cut. That's just pushing the buttons on red. So you can either do a quick cut or a fade, it's up to you. This is why we don't use the T-bar because sometimes T-bar gets stuck like that and that is not a good look. So we use the buttons because it's cleaner and it's consistent timing on the fade, okay? So to the OBS software, on the bottom right, you'll see these controls. First one says start streaming, which I'm not going to start because it would send this stream to uh, our Facebook page and also to our um, YouTube channel. Start streaming. We try to start the stream at 1040. Whenever the countdown video begins in the sanctuary, we start the stream. And again, the stream when we start it would be on this. So we have it on the, um, the slide introduction, okay? So we would start the streaming, and then this is also very important. Um, during the prayer time, whenever the music portion of the service is over, come down here and click Start Recording. So we make a recording, not only do we stream live, but we also make a recording of the service. Now when the service is over and you have stopped the recording and stopped the streaming, the final task to finish before closing down everything is come back over here to the web page, and there should be a tab open that is connected to my personal Dropbox, okay? Dropbox. If not, you can just type in Dropbox and it should come right up to my Dropbox. Click the word Upload, Files. As you come to this, you'll see it'll immediately default to the video folder where the recordings of the service land. So whatever the final one is, you can see this one is 9-11. Uh, that was this past Sunday. Um, you can click open and it will automatically upload that video file to my Dropbox. So what I do with that is then I edit that video I put in the PowerPoint slides that we used in the sermon. And then also that um, audio file is uploaded to our podcast platform so people can either watch the video, play back on YouTube, or they can listen to the podcast on iTunes, whatever they want to. After uploading the video to my Dropbox, the next thing is just to shut everything down. And the way I shut it down is I shut it down and I shut it down, the power button back here, push power right behind the T-bar. There's a button under here for the power for the monitor. I'll power that monitor off. I'll power this monitor off. 
I leave the main computer running because it's probably still uploading the video file to my Dropbox. And finally, I'll put the iPad to sleep. Well, that's all there is to it. Hopefully you can watch this video and rewatch it uh, and get a handle on what to do. Again, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask me and I'll point out some uh, troubleshooting. But thanks so much for being willing to serve.